Welcome back to Phlebotomy Solutions video presentation. Today we're going to be discussing hemoconcentration. So what is hemoconcentration? Well, according to Phlebotomy Today, hemoconcentration is an abnormally high concentration of blood. Blood becomes concentrated or thickens when the proportion of cells and other larger elements of the blood increase to such a degree that it no longer reflects the patient's actual health status. So what causes hemoconcentration? Well, one is the posture of a patient. Believe it or not, when a patient is laying down and is asked to sit up or even stand up, there is a, a raise in blood pressure, and during that temporary state, hemoconcentration is in the blood. So that means that the phlebotomist, phlebotomist attempts to draw blood immediately, that the test results will be inaccurate or could be inaccurate based on that temporary state of hemoconcentration. So we need to keep that in mind when the patient's lying down and we're asking him to sit up or to get out of their bed to sit down. There is a phase or temporary state of hemoconcentration because of the, of the blood pressure change. So again, this can uh, change test results. Uh, it might not be significant. Uh, 5 to 15% change could do it depending. Uh, there'll be cholesterol levels or triglyceride levels that could be changed uh, dependent upon this hemoconcentration phase within the line to, to sitting to standing. And the reverse also if the patient goes from sitting, standing to lying down. So we got to keep that in mind. The second part is prolonged tourniquet time on the patient. We all know or should know that a tourniquet should not be uh, placed on a patient longer than one minute. Anything over the one minute mark can result in hemoconcentration of the blood and again, inaccurate test results. So we need to be aware that when the tourniquet goes on, we got to keep that one minute in mind. So if you're a phlebotomist and you think that you're coming to that one minute mark and you're going to be going over and there could be a chance of hemoconcentration setting in, then we need to release that tourniquet and hope that the blood flow continues. Some phlebotomists will release the tourniquet immediately after the needle goes in the patient. That's okay too, but a result of the tourniquet restricting blood flow, blood flow can cease and therefore the blood can also stop coming into the tube. So we got to keep that in mind. So, so take the precaution on that, that if you can leave it on longer while you're drawing blood, just keep the one minute in mind and release the tourniquet if you feel that it's going over the one minute mark. Number three is fist pumping before or during the blood draw. Now this is also a crucial part because patients uh, like to pump their fist. Well, that pumping of the fist will cause hemoconcentration. These are studies that have been conducted and that shows that the effects of pumping fists uh, can, uh, can be inaccurate results for potassium levels, ionized calcium, that these areas can result in an accurate test because of hemoconcentration. And that's because of the patient pumping their fist. So I usually have the patient just close their fist gently and, and just give a slight squeeze, but no pumping. That way I can get the muscles to kind of tighten up a little bit with the tourniquet. But again, I don't want them pumping the fish. We pumping the fist. We do know now that that it can cause hemoconcentration in the blood and of course inaccurate test results. So we need to keep these three things in mind in regards to hemoconcentration and what causes hemoconcentration. So some more good references on hemoconcentration. You can look at some of these references, the pre-analytical phase and important component of laboratory testing, uh, lab draw answer book, ab applied phlebotomy. You can look at phlebotomy handbook, uh, phlebotomy work text and procedure manual, phlebotomy essentials, volume six, volume seven coming out in April. You can look at uh, pre-analytic variables in laboratory testing, uh, CLSI collection of diagnostic venous blood specimens approved standard and of course you can look at also investigating elevated potassium values. These are some great references if you want some more information on hemoconcentrations and the effect it has on blood procedures and blood test results. So great references and you can check, check those out online. For more information visit phlebotomysolutions.org and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel.